Welcome back, folks, to World of Warships Legends. I am Super Dave, and today on our How to Play in Build Guides, we're going to be taking a look at the Baltimore, uh, the uh, American Heavy Cruiser. And uh, I always like to call this the Space Line because they have the space camos for them. Right off the bat, we've talked about the Commanders. If you watch the entire series or you uh, watch the playlist, um, you already know what this is. This is Norman Scott with a Geiss. Obviously, there's a ton of commander options. I just happen to be in a position where uh, instead of using Einstein or Baltimore, uh, I have uh, Norman Scott. You know, I don't have a bunch of the other commanders leveled up yet. Uh, maybe eventually I'll use Norman Scott, or I mean uh, uh, Einstein. That's probably the one I will use. Uh, for the most part, but this is Norman Scott with Nikolai Kuzinov for the uh, range and a Mimbelli for the reload time. Beyond range, igniter, punch through, fixated, and now this is in the line where I would start using fully packed. Before this, he didn't have a radar, so in my opinion, refill station was better uh, in getting that reload down. So just, I mean, they're probably, you could still do either, but for me, I would probably do uh, fully packed, especially if you're only Legend Tier 1, because, uh, you know, otherwise you need 1.5 to have somebody close to get the main battery range is a little close. So, especially at Tier 7, where, uh, you know, ships start to get more spread apart, for the upgrades on the ship, we have main aiming systems mod one. The tur turret traverse isn't too terrible on Balti, so um, I I'm always a person that takes the aiming. Just always have been. Again, you could add, as always, on the mod slot two, you could do steering gears mod two or propulsion mod two. And this this heavy cruiser line that Baltimore is in, the rudder is pretty good, and it reacts pretty well for the most part. Balti, it's a little bit, it feels a little sluggish, but it's still not bad. Uh, and for your third mod slot, the concealment mod, and for the fourth one, I choose the range and main battery dispersion. You could, however, take the main battery reload if you would like it. It just depends on what you're into. They're both viable options. And for your upgrades when you get to them, I would definitely take the uh, firing range increase. And I don't know why these are bugged out, but this does not have 16 kilometer range on this ship. But I would take the extra range as always. And then the extra health in a little bit better rudder. And then do your artillery 203 upgrades. So we will take a look at the loadouts. So with fully packed, you get three sonars, three radars, and three health. So in the health, actually, are the, the repair party, uh, the three repair parties you get, they're not actually that bad. And they... Um, they seem to reload pretty quick. You know, you don't realize it and you already have one ready. And a lot of times that comes in handy in Baltimore, especially my aggressive play style. Having them heals does help. I do have a few dreadnoughts in this. Uh, for the camos, you can put one on for the extra detect detectability and fire dispersion. Um, I always do. We're going to put the spaced one on because, again, that's what you're going to see in the video for specs. 42,000 health. Uh, in the, the still the 8 inch 203s that reload relatively good for uh, you know this line they actually reload pretty quick for what they are AA this is where you start to get better AA in this line you did it wasn't terrible before but now you at least got at least five kilometer distance on this line which uh, does help a lot instead of the four that you get with the New Orleans and Pensacola maneuverability uh, 32 it uh, a little on the slow side 
And even though the rudder shift is seven seconds, it does actually, it is, doesn't seem as quick to react like the Pensa Crapper or the New Orleans. And the turning circle, because this is a longer ship, is quite, you know, it, it is a lot longer than New Orleans at 730 meters. Also, you can see the firing distance, and unlike that last page, it is 18.7. So you have plenty of range in this ship, uh, especially with American shells because they lob. You get too far in cruisers, and it doesn't always help at, at a certain point. And for a, cr a heavy cruiser, 10.9 detectability is pretty good for you that that does allow you kind of to get around a little bit more than you normally would for the armor we have a 27 millimeter bow so you need to overmatch that it's 16 inch guns so at tier 7 uh i would say probably two-thirds i think uh, of battleships are probably over that maybe even a little bit more but there are battleships you can bow tank. But you can bow tank cruisers, which does have its perks. Um, but even though uh, this armor is a lot better than probably a lot of the rest of the line, you still do have to be careful. There is a raised citadel uh, that is an exposed citadel like the rest of the line outside. Um, it, it is a lot harder to hit than probably the rest of the line, but if you are just being dumb, uh, and I have in this, <laughs> uh, you definitely can get Citadel, but it is a tough ship, um, because this is a ship that I recently did it, it, I had three battles I kind of wanted to showcase with this. Uh, and we're not going to because they're all three long battles, and I don't like to have long videos, but they were all three different, which was really cool. I actually, in one of them, I got into a war with a Brandenburg, in, and I mean really, really close uh, with a Brandenburg, and I, I can't remember what the other one was, but uh, over cap control, and we end out up, uh, ended up on top. Maybe if I remember, I'll put a clip in of that just so you can see that chaos. Uh, just so you can see, it can take a lot of damage if you're being smart with it. I have a tendency to be over-aggressive because it has a radar, and I love hunting destroyers. So be careful with that radar. It can get you in trouble. Real quick, this is a uh, clip from that match that I was talking about where we get in a war with a Brandenburg and it is an Amagi and to the right is a uh, Bismarck and you can see we last a long time and we actually end up winning this and keeping the cap for our team but this is what the whole fight was and it was just a war all the way down to the wire so uh, a good match but just showing a short brawl with a Bra or a, a short distance brawl with the Brandenburg and uh, the Bismarck shows how tanky it is, but I don't feel like it's necessarily a good showcase of the ship as a whole. As we go ahead and start this match and check who we're up against, I do want to say it is disclaimer time. This is a beginner's guide to help out people just learning this ship or uh, learning the game in general. This is not for professional gamers that know everything there is to know about everything. There is also multiple ways to build and play ships, so opinions will vary. I am just a above average player. I don't claim to be the best player in the world. I just am a pretty darn good player, so I do make mistakes. You're going to see some in this match. And also, you didn't come to this video to see how to pronounce names, as I am very terrible at slaughtering other beautiful languages it's almost an art form so keep that in mind when you're watching this guys also i want to note from that clip you guys saw on the bismarck the brandenburg and the amagi and i believe there was a rochester to my right uh shooting at me in that match uh, i've never had that much potential damage at tier seven before in a cruiser in fact it was more than i think most of my battleship best average i that was well over 2 million potential damage against me in that match. So it goes to show you can take a lot of damage if you're careful. And 
let's be honest, German battleships sometimes can be not that scary. Uh, with that being said, we are on Estuary. This is absolutely one of my favorite maps. This, or probably Haven, because some in, they always get some interesting crossfires on this map. And in the Baltimore, it plays a lot like the other heavy cruisers in this line. In showing a different match of kind of controlling the middle and not giving your ground up in the middle, uh, I wanted to show that because this is... Uh, Definitely, it ha it obviously has some cool moments in it, and it, it kind of shows off, you know, if you know you're in a good spot, stick with it. It'll pan out for you eventually. Now, with this American Heavy Cruiser line, obviously, AP, for the most part, is the go-to as we have uh, the teams pushing up. So this is kind of a interesting match because there is a lot of battleships and a lot of this line has been showing me with battle uh you know with a lot of battleships so if you've seen the rest of the series uh you'll know that a lot of the matches have that and that's okay but it does showcase how to be smart and even though you can be the center of attention uh this line can take the beating if you allow it to now, this match is a little bit different. We don't really get beat on here, but we dictate where the kind of... We keep the opponents out of the middle a lot in this match, which is very powerful because I, I think at Estuary in particular, when you control the middle of the match, you control the entire game. Um, not so much, I guess, on Capture the Base like we're on, here but particularly when there is a lot of uh when you do have the you know the caps the normal a b c caps because you can really control a lot we're just taking the best available shot we can and we are staying undetected and i am definitely keeping an eye on that charles martel i am hoping uh that i can get a good shot off on him here as you can see, we do shoot them. I was trying to get my team to just realize as we get a Citadel, so we did get something that, hey, we're getting pushed um, by the Battleship and a Charles Martel, which I'm not too scared about the Charles Martel. I'm more worried about the Richelieu. Uh, it's easy to bounce the Charles Martel shells, but Richelieu can be a pain in the butt sometimes because you can't, sometimes when it bow tanks, you really can't do a ton of damage to it other than the superstructure. And now I'm getting a little nervous about how close the Charles Martel is. But you can see we take a couple shots at the Richelieu. I should have aimed a little bit farther forward. But we are getting damage on him. And we do have uh, a teammate off to our right. And that's why I was worried about how close he was. is Because I uh, figured he'd either ram or go sideways to torp me. And that's why we waited for it. And we do take a torp on the nose, but uh, all in all, not that bad. Uh, I probably could have turned in a little bit more, but I want to be careful that I didn't get myself in a terrible position or out too far. As you can see, we got shells that came in, which I think were from the Vanguard. Oh, no, Chappy. Um, and so we do take a fair amount of help off of the Richelieu. And now the Bismarck is pushing. And now this is a spot where I, before, when I first started playing this game, and I still do it sometimes, I have the uncontrollable urge to go push up and just start chaos and get into an absolute war. Um, and you can see we do finish off the Bismarck. AP on German battleships at distance works very well. They... They are very susceptible to plunging fire, it seems. The, um, so if you, you do notice that, I mean, obviously they have the big superstructures like the Americans, so you're going to do damage that way too. But it also seems like they take more plunging fire. Like, for example, you can citadel some German battleships with a Balti just on plunging fire alone. So you see, not a bad start. 65,000 damage. We got two off the board. But you'd see, this is an even match. And I know 
I could push up and be really stupid, but there is a lot of ships on that side of the map. And if I just go uh, show myself, I will get absolutely destroyed. And this is where the heals come in handy. I should have used the heal right now, to be honest, and get that on a cooldown. That's one mistake I made. But on this map, you're looking at your map so much, you're not really looking at the cooldowns because you got to pay attention to see if you are... Uh, you know, are you getting going to get focused on? And you can see we get radar. And the big thing, when you get radar, do not panic. <laughs> Just because you get radar doesn't mean you're dead. And also, <laughs> don't use your smoke. I see a lot of destroyers when they get radar. They just go ahead and smoke up. That's not going to help you. <laughs> I, in fact, the one play I definitely would have done is I would have definitely used my radar. Or my heel. There we go. I did use it, but it took me long enough. And you can see I'm spotted here, um, obviously at 19.3, uh, but I've been spotted even when I'm not shooting. So that tells me there's a destroyer here, and I'm waiting. I want him to think I've already used the radar, and I'm very, very stingy with my radars. Even though I have three of them, I don't use one right away because a lot of times that's what people are expecting so they're kind of gonna throw torps and then do it uh, and then get out but I've been spotted for a while here and um, I'm gonna keep focusing over here on the Sharn horse uh, but you're gonna see here is in, in a second um, I think this is where yeah I see the torps coming and then I decide you know what he probably doesn't think I have a radar uh, and I know I was spotted at 10 and there you go it's 8-7. He's off to the left. I actually didn't see it right away. I expected him to be behind me, to be honest with you. So not a best thing there. As you can see, uh, radar. Shoot, see a destroyer? Shoot a destroyer. It's like my favorite thing to do in this game is uh, get destroyers. And every, You know, I you guys probably think I cherry-picked the matches. Um, but in all honesty... Outside of the Baltimore, just because I've had done it, all the other matches that I can recollect other than two, two of them videos, they were all first take videos. And I know that sounds absolutely crazy, but I do focus a lot on destroyers because they do control the match. And as you can see, with that destroyer being gone, I do want to hit a sonar, and that's just to make sure... Uh, if anybody was around me, they were super aware of them torps, uh, like that battleship on my left on the other side of the mountain. Hopefully he was paying attention, so my uh, sonar kind of detected them for a while. I don't know if that would have helped him out. He probably wasn't going fast enough to get hit by him. But now we see the Vandy pushing up. And the Vanguard, remember I talked about 16-inch... Rounds overmatching the front of it. Well, Vanguard's only got 15 inch shells, so I'm not in the slightest worried about Vanguard. I know that sounds crazy, but I'm just not. Um, and if he gives me a broadside, I can 100% sit it down with even 18 inch shells. But the Rishilu pops up, and I want to make sure we get rid of him before he decides to make me a target. And uh, I actually, I kind of expected uh, the other battleship to, or the other, uh, the cruiser to come up. So I kind of had Ichi ready because I thought, I think it's Wichita that's over there. And I thought he was going to try to, uh, there he is, there it is. So I had kind of Ichi loaded. I was assuming he was going to come up, but we will go ahead and use the AP. Um, sometimes, uh, with the the he gets some really good hits if you're really close and you can see i overpinned a lot so sometimes i will use he and uh on, a, on like a wichita a really thin one as you can see we got two overpins there now we're doing damage so um and then also i had he loaded as well because vanguard was angled towards me and wichita should not be closing the distance in this fight it should have relied on it's probably it's spotting but we do get it down I, my teammate does get that kill which is actually i don't care about krakens at all but i didn't even realize that we had kills uh for this 
And you can see here now, I am not even slightly scared of this Vanguard. In fact, I'm even going to radar to let them know I'm coming. <laughs> like, I know that's... I know that's weird to you guys, but I was trying to let them know, hey, I'm within eight kilometers of you, and I'm going to kill you. <laughs> um, because the, van the, the Vanguard just doesn't scare me in the slightest. You see, first shot, a Citadel. Um, so uh, uh, I did have, uh, sometimes when this happens, I get a little bit, uh, I went through one shell up into the, the top. I should have just aimed at the belt and and finish them right away. But you can see we sit it on the Vandy with the Vanguard with no problem at all. Um, you know, not a super amazing game, but, you know, 2,600 top of leaderboard. We really helped our team, controlled the middle of that map, and uh, had a lot of fun. Anyway, hopefully this helps you guys out. We'll see you next time. Have a good one, folks.